Commencing upon this conquest of Mecca, the Reverend Boswell Smith writes, Now would have been the moment to gratify his ambition, to satiate his lust, to glut his revenge. Read the account of the entry of Muhammad into Mecca side by side with that of Marines of Sulla into Rome. Compare all the attendant circumstances, the outrages that preceded, and the use made by each of his recovered power, and we shall then be in a better position to appreciate the magnanimity and moderation of the prophets of Arabia. There were no proscription lists, no plunder, no wanton revenge. From a helpless orphan to the ruler of a big country was a great transition, yet the prophet retained the nobility of his character under all circumstances. Quoted from Muhammad and Muhammadanism. My dear sisters and brothers, let there remain no doubt that the Holy Prophet wasalam, was indeed a messenger of peace and reconciliation, whose greatest achievement in this regard was the establishment of peace between man and God. He was born in an era which was the darkest period of the Dark Ages. Religion, morals, and philosophy were all at a low ebb. The Arabs were divided into warring factions. He united them in love for each other and love for their creator. They were responding like beasts to their animal urges. He refined their cravings into aspirations for the sublime. They were idolaters and lacking in any notion of divine unity. He established them as the sincerest worshippers of the one true God. Even then, he would continually supplicate for the salvation of his spiritual progeny. Sinless though he was, he prayed for the forgiveness of our sins. To save us from the fire of hell, he would stand up so long in prayer that his feet would get swollen. He wept for our sake till his breast heaved like a boiling pot and his prayer mat became soaked in tears. He drew unto us the mercy of Allah. He toiled for his pleasure again for us. He caused us to be wrapped up in the mantle of Allah's grace and the garments of his compassion. In short, he paved the way for us to achieve everlasting peace communion and union with our maker. My dear sisters and brothers, nothing seems more ironical than that the prophet who was born in Mecca, known as Baladul Amin, that is the abode of peace. The prophet who founded a religion, the very name of which means peace. The prophet who struck at the very root of religious acrimony by requiring his followers to believe in all prophets of God. The prophet whose teachings, if fully acted upon, would establish an era of perpetual peace in all spheres of life. The prophet who leads up the path to everlasting peace, communion, and union with our God should be branded the prophet of war, whose religion was propagated at the point of this word. We will content ourselves, however, in the knowledge that every objective study of the life of our beloved prophet cannot but affirm his excellent virtues and peaceful disposition. The Christian writer, Karen Armstrong, when suggesting ways in which the West could understand Islam, writes, Perhaps one place to start is with the figure of Muhammad, a complex, passionate man who sometimes did things that are difficult for us to accept, but who had genius of a profound order and who founded a religion and a cultural tradition that was not based on his word, despite the Western myth, and whose name, Islam, signifies peace and reconciliation. The great British playwright and author, George Bernard Shaw, concluded, Far from being an antichrist, he must be called the savior of humanity. I believe that if such a man were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving all his problems in a way that would bring about much needed peace and happiness. <laughs> Most worthy chairman, I will be remiss in my duty here today if, in the end, I fail to highlight our responsibilities as Ahmadi Muslims in this regard. We live in a world rent asunder by strife, where conflicts and warfare are commonplace, where economies are faltered by the weight of inequality and political systems are ruptured by the force of their corruption where the most basic of rights purported to be for the many are usurped by the few, where world leaders are finding themselves increasingly powerless in offering lasting solutions to global problems. It is a sad indictment of the current state of affairs 
made only worse when we consider that over 1400 years ago, in the barren deserts of Arabia, at a time when populations were sparse, when modes of communication were limited and methods of warfare basic, that Allah the Almighty imbued the most humble of his servants to have ever trod the earth with the most exquisite message of peace which humankind has ever been privy to and shaped that messenger's life in such a way that every last sinew of his being was dedicated to guiding mankind as to the true manner in which that message of peace could be inculcated into our daily lives. As followers of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, who was commissioned by Allah to renew the relationship between man and God, to eliminate religious wars, and to lay the foundations of peace, it is our responsibility in today's world to explain all the beautiful teachings of peace and reconciliation illustrated in the life of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We, the members of this community, must confront the dark forces of ignorance and prejudice surrounding the citadels of civilization with the true teachings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that humankind can benefit alike from his precepts and from his example. It is only fitting, therefore, that I should leave the last word to our beloved Huzu, who once addressed the members of the community in the course of a Friday sermon in the following terms. It is a duty of every Ahmadi today that it should take this message to the whole world that the true teachings of Islam is the one given to us by the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. You should take the message of love, peace, and brotherhood and declare to the whole world that Islam was not spread by the sword but by the excellence of his teachings. Islam! Islam! Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa! Ghulam Ahmed Ki! It is the crying need of the time to convince the world that Islam spread during the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of his prayers and supplications. And in this age, God willing, that will happen only by presenting the true teachings of Islam as expounded by the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, the true devotee and servant of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah so ordain that we are able to respond to this call of Hazrat Amir Mu'minin and thereby succeed in establishing the peace in the world which our beloved Prophet pined for so much. Amen. Nare takbi Nare takbi Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Hazrat Khadim Al-Anbiya <laughs>